What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. We have a new eight part series on Netflix called The Madness. So what we'll be doing is breaking down eight days, eight recaps of this series on Netflix. No one does it like me. So Sunday to Sunday, we will have these up and going. Now The Madness is about a media Putin who stumbles across a dead body deep in the Poconos woods. He finds himself framed for the murder of a notorious white supremacist. Now this show was pretty good. I watched about the first three, four episodes here, and now we're about to break down episode one. But before we do, if you like murder mysteries, if you like trying to figure out what's next, you wanna solve the case, well, The Madness might be a series for you, and we have eight days of eight recaps. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers, hopefully trying to hit that 100,000 by the end of 2025. So if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. This is episode one, The Madness. We start off episode one with the plot and we see our main character Muncie coming up out of the woods and we're wondering what the heck just happened to him. He's coming out here breathing hard, lost, dazed and confused. And just like you and I, he doesn't know what the hell is going on. He ends up making it into town and goes to a little diner. He's trying to contact the police. But what does he see in the booth? He sees some police over there with some bacon, some eggs, some sausage, some toast. And he tells them he had a rough morning, but he needs to sit down and talk to him about something. The officers look at each other. They see this random black man in this <laughs> secluded area. And they're wondering, what the hell is he doing up here? We take it back a couple of days and we see that Muncie actually works for CNN. and He's an anchor. Now he has a co-host up here, Renee, who's filling in and they have a history with each other and they know a little bit about each other. But after he gets on here, we see that he is very confident and they're talking about the housing crisis in America. We get some background on Muncie. He goes to see his ex-wife, Elena, and she has a son by the name of Demetrius. These two are separated currently. She shows up to the door and she's like, oh, you finally decide to show up? Because we know that he's a very busy man. He's a news anchor on CNN the biggest news media outlet in the world. So of course he has a tough time getting over here to see the family, but that's probably a reason why they separated because he doesn't have the time. We get introduced to his son Demetrius also, and that's the one reason why Munchie is showing up over here. Munchie is trying to talk to his son about smoking that reefer, that marijuana, that hard stuff, or well, it ain't hard stuff, but his son is saying, I'm not fully developed yet. And it's all right, dad, I ain't smoking that much anyway. But you also hear him asking about his mother, Demetrius, your mom doing all right? Because he isn't around and we know he still wants to be there, but you know, sometimes relationships, they don't go as you want and you grow apart. In life, everyone has to have a plan B. So Muncie, he met with his lawyer earlier and he's decided that he's about to write a book. So what does he do? He rents a cabin on Airbnb to get away from the city, get away from all the distractions so he can finally start writing his book and we know about tv shows and movies cabins are usually the worst place to go to because anything can happen and of course this is where the story begins now muncie he's out here writer's block go outside for a little jog and a gentleman pulls up in a truck now his name is mark and he's saying wait you're on the news cnn so these two they introduce themselves to each other and mark says hey if you need anything i mean anything while you're out here in the woods Feel free to come over to my place and I'll help you out. Because remember, Muncie, he's renting this place just to write a book. So he doesn't really know what's going on out here. But Mark, he seems like a wholesome guy, a guy that you can trust. And he has a nice G-Shock watch on his hand. Muncie goes back in the house and he starts writing. He's smoking a little bit, got to ease his mind. But while he's working, he realizes that the power just went out and he's looking around. So he has to go and find out how to turn this power back on. We're out in the woods. Of course, cell service isn't that great. But once he figures out he can't turn it on, he goes over to Mark's house. Now, remember, Mark just told him, if you need anything, come on over. Maybe Mark has a backup supply of propane, some kind of gas to keep the generators working. So you got to go in and at least ask for help. You don't want to be out here in the dark and in the cold. This is where a turn of events come. Munchie shows up to Mark's house. He doesn't see Mark. Cell service is horrible. He goes over to the sauna and what does he see in the sauna? A plastic bag on the ground in the dismemberment of Mark's body. You remember that G-Shock watch? Well, it's on his wrist and it's chopped up. And what does he see? 
two random people come out from the side of the house. He takes off into the woods, and that's how we get to where we started off. Now he's running, and we know being in the cabins, I already mentioned, is a horrible place to be, especially in a TV show or in a movie. After running away from these two henchmen, Muncie ends up falling into a little swamp. Now when he gets out there, he goes up under the water. We know that he's a little bit tactical. We also know that he can fight from what we've seen in the opening scene. Now this guy, he starts shooting off in the water. We hear his name mentioned because the other guy calls out for Ant. But what Muncie does next, he gets out the water. and He takes one of his famous pins that he was awarded and he stabs this guy one time, but he also hurts his leg. And that's how he ended up running off into the woods for the opening scene that we've seen. He took out one of these gentlemen, but it was self-defense. He had to get out of there. After he sat down with the police at the diner, they go out here to try to figure out what's going on. So he shows them the sauna, but Mark's body's not in there. Now remember, he didn't ran through the woods. He's dirty as hell. He was in a swamp. So the police are looking at him like, hmm, you need to go ahead and tell us a little more about what you said happened because we don't have any evidence here. There's no one out here. What is really going on? Are you lying to us? Are you making this up? Now everyone has a little bit of suspicion. Muncie's looking like, what the hell? I know I'm not dreaming this. I know what I saw. The police are saying, well, we're going to take you back to your cabin. But when we call you, you need an answer. And when they get back to their cabin, he realizes that his Range Rover tire is slit. So whoever was after him in the woods or did whatever they did to Mark, they're chasing after him. So he's looking around like, do y'all not notice what happened to my truck? Someone is clearly after me. But the police, they're looking at it as maybe you set all of this up. Once the guy gets here to tow the car in to fix the tires, when he does a little inspection of the vehicle, he finds a tracking device in the back passenger wheel well. Muncie's looking, what the hell is going on here? Imagine you just went out here to write a book, went next door to get some help because the power went out, and now there's a body that's missing. You didn't tore up your leg. You didn't have to unalive somebody. Your car tire is flat. And now there's a tracking device. The police don't believe you. This is a lot of stuff happening within 24 hours. So Muncie, never go back to the woods. To everyone listening, never go to the woods. But it's getting scary. Upon arrival back to his city, he goes home and he's looking at his leg. But what he realizing is there's a photo of him and his family that's been turned. And then also the latch on the door to his balcony. It looks like somebody then broke into it. So the first thing he does is call his lawyer and he also calls the police because if someone breaks in your house, you have to file that police report if you want to get any homeowners insurance claims, but also for your safety, especially after what just happened over these last 24 hours. Shout out to my guy CT Royce playing this police officer here, but his lawyer quest is over here and the police are saying, well, we don't have too much evidence and we're running background checks on a guy by the name of Dick Silk. And we're also running backgrounds on you because of what happened out in the Poconos woods where he filed a police report. So right now it's looking a little suspicious, but since nothing was stolen, it looks like it may have just been a breaking and entering. There's really nothing they can do except for filing a police claim. When Mark Simon introduced himself, he also gave him a business card. Now Mark Simon owns a furniture store. And when he gets there, he's talking to one of the managers. Hey, is Mark Simon in? Because he's trying to gather some information to trying to follow up who Mark is, who may have been the last person to come in contact with him. But the guy is saying, no, I don't know. So Muncie, he plays it smart. Hey, well, I'm looking to get my man cave fixed. And you seem like the type of guy that can help me. So what this guy does unknowingly, he gives up that Mark is separated from his wife. He gave his wife, Lucia, the home and has custody of the kids. So now he has a little bit of evidence and a lead that he can follow up on to see who talked to Mark Ladd. Obviously, when he pulls up to Lucy's neighborhood, everyone's looking at him. A black guy, Range Rover. There's no black people on this block. Who is he out here waiting on? He's sitting across the street from Lucy's house. Now, this is Mark's ex-wife, and he's waiting for her to get home so he can ask her a few questions about the last time she heard or seen from Mark. When he gets here, he gets straight to it. Hey, I know Mark. Are you married to Mark? Was he in the Poconos woods? Because I was out there and I seen some things. Have you heard from him? Now, she's a little bit nervous that a black guy showed up out of nowhere. Now, we don't know the full details of what Mark's background is. But what we do know is his wife has the house and the kids and she knows something. 
Now she's a little hesitant to talk to him because everyone in the neighborhood sees this black guy, so she's a little distant. Now her boyfriend shows up and is asking, is everything all right? But Muncie, he says, call me if you hear anything or you know if he's been working with anyone because someone is after me and I think they were after Mark also. Just when the day couldn't get any worse or weirder, he's sitting down at a diner and out of nowhere, an FBI agent, FBI Franco shows up and he's like, hey, I got a couple of questions about you out in Poconos. Now, you know, the feds, they have way more information than local PD. And he's asking them about the guy, Mark Simon, who lived next door. Now, we don't know if Agent Franco is good, bad, or indifferent, but right now, he's just asking a few questions, and he also tells Muncie, when you get a chance, call me, notify me if you come up with anything. Because remember, this police report was filed, and all of this information is getting out there. Now, Agent Franco also gives him the information on who Mark Simon is. He's part of a group called The Forge, and allegedly, he is Brother 14, the leader of this white supremacist group and since he's been knocked off he's such a high ranking figure it's looking bad for everybody so as of right now the fingers are starting to point towards the black guy the only person that we knew that was out in those woods and filed a report even though we know that there were two other guys Ant and someone else after finding out about a brother 14 in the forge he goes to the hospital to get his leg treated now some fans show up and they're asking them, hey, you're on TV, but they're not fans of CNN. They're actually fans of the Ford and Brother 14. And they're saying, why'd you kill Mark? Why'd you do that? You think we're gonna let that go? What about your family? You think they're safe now? Because Brother 14 was so high ranking, they're after anyone they think has something to do with it. But they end up running off. And Muncie's realizing that this is getting real. After he leaves the hospital, straight to Elena's house. You, Demetrius, Get in the car. We got to go right now. This ish is serious. Now, Demetrius is talking about, I just got this game. I'm trying to beat him in the next five minutes. He's like, man, if you don't get up off your butt, Elena's even looking. We're not married anymore. What are you doing? He's like, this is serious. We need to go. Now, whenever someone runs to the house and tell you we need to pack up and go right now, let me tell you something. You need to be gone like yesterday. After leaving the hospital, there's a lady by the name of Laura Jennings. She comes up to Muncie and tells him, I know you didn't do this. I need an interview or an exclusive from you. Now she's on the internet, she does YouTube, shout out to YouTube. And some people think that she's a conspiracy theorist, but she says she knows what's going on and she knows that he didn't do it. So he has her information and Elena's saying, you should probably go and talk to him. He's like, nah, that conspiracy stuff wouldn't do any good for me right now. Now they're held up in a motel, but She's the only person as of right now that seems like she knows what's going on. The next morning, he goes to the motel lobby to get some breakfast. Now, it doesn't look like it's anything that you'd be interested in, some dry cereal, maybe an apple. But as he goes back to the car, there's somebody standing right next to his vehicle, and then they drive off. But when he opens up the passenger door and looks in the back seat for the Nintendo Switch controller, he sees the face of that watch up under his driver's seat. So he's starting to realize that I'm really getting set up out here. And on the back of this watch is the initials MS, Mark Simon. This is only episode one. We in the thick of it now. All right, there you go. The plot for episode one of The Madness on Netflix. Let me know what you think about Muncie. Is this too much for him to come back from? And if you were in this situation, are you telling the police what you know? Or are you going to try to solve this case on your own? Me personally, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm throwing that watch somewhere. I'm leaving my family in that motel. I might have to go start a new life. This seems like too much for me. <laughs> but let me know what you think. That's episode one. Tune in tomorrow. This is eight days, eight recaps of the show Madness, the Netflix series. I'm Modi J. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.